Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone, welcome to the week 9 lecture. This week we're going to talk about scatter plots, Pearson's correlation coefficients and significance testing. So we're going to start with a new research question. Do older children tend to spend more or less time playing outdoors than younger children? So this research question involves two variables. The first one is age in years and the second one is time spent playing outdoors which we'll measure in minutes per day. Now both of those are metric variables. What we need to decide is which one is the dependent variable and the way we'll approach this is to speculate about what we expect to find. We expect, or personally I expect, that older children will tend to spend more time playing outdoors than younger children. Now implicit in that expectation, I'm comparing children of different ages. I'm comparing older children to younger children. And so that tells me that age is the independent variable. I'm comparing children of different ages, so age is the independent variable. And time spent playing outdoors is the dependent variable. So in order to test that hypothesis we've collected some data. So this is the first four cases in that data set. We've recorded the age and the time spent playing outdoors for each of four children here. When we're looking at the relationship between two metric variables like this we start with a graph of the data and the graph is called a scatter plot. Now there are some really strong conventions about scatter plots and one of them is that the dependent variable will go on the vertical axis and the independent variable will go on the horizontal axis. So in this case our scatter plot will have age on the horizontal axis and time spent playing outside our dependent variable on the vertical axis. So if we look at how we plot those points the first child had an age of 4 and they spent 60 minutes per day playing outside. So their point would go here on the graph. And then the second child, they were 12 years old and they spent 125 minutes per day playing outdoors, so this represents the second child. Now we could go and plot all of the cases in our data file by hand like this, but that would be fairly tedious. Instead of that we can get SPSS to produce the scatter plot for us. And you'll see instructions for how to do that in the appendices in the textbook. So let's just have a look at what the scatter plot looks like. In this scatter plot each of the points represents one child. So for each child we're plotting their age against the time they spent playing out outdoors. Now we can use that scatter plot to describe the relationship between age and time spent playing outside in our sample. And when we do that there's four different features that we need to be looking at. The first one is the direction of the relationship. The second one is the form. The third one we need to look and see if there are any outliers. And fourthly we'll look at the strength. And we're going to talk about each one of those in turn. So let's start with direction. So for this relationship between age and time spent playing outside the older children tend to spend more time playing outside or to be really formal about it the higher ages are associated with higher time spent playing outside. So let's just have a look at that in a little bit more detail. Over here on the left hand side of the graph we've got children who are aged 4, four to 5 and they're spending maybe 60 to 90 minutes a day playing outside. On the right hand side here we've got the older children. These children are aged you know, 11 to 12 and you'll see that they're spending a lot more time playing outside, maybe 100, 100 minutes to 180 minutes per day. So what we can see here is that the graph slopes upwards from left to right. The older children tend to be spending more time playing outside. And we call this a positive relationship. Let's have a look at um, another graph which shows a negative relationship. So in this graph you would see that the younger children aged around 6 to 7 were spending 130-140 minutes playing outside per day whereas the 
older children, the, the 14 year olds, were spending down around 30 to 60 minutes playing outside per day. So in this scatter plot, what we're seeing is a negative relationship. The older children tend to spend less time playing outside, and that's a downward slope as we go from left to right across the graph. Now both of these relationships that we've looked at so far between age and time spent playing outdoors could be represented by a straight line and we call these linear relationships. But not all relationships are linear. What if the relationship between age and time spent playing outdoors looked like this? So here you can see there's a really distinct curve in the relationship. So it's, there's no general upward trend and there's no general downward trend. So it starts off for the younger children from three to about seven. The older children tend to spend more time playing outdoors than the younger ones, but then when we move from seven to eleven, the older children tend to spend less time playing outside than the younger ones. So we call this a nonlinear relationship. And to represent this relationship, we'd need a curve. So this is what we mean when we talk about the form of the relationship. Does it show some curve or nonlinear component? So here's another example of a curved or nonlinear relationship between age and time spent playing outside. And if we were to try and fit a line to that relationship, again, it would be a curved line, not a straight one. So one other thing we need to look at in relationships is the strength of the relationship. So the strength is all about how accurately could you predict the dependent variable knowing the value of the independent variable. So if you have a look at this relationship between age and time spent playing outdoors, this is a really strong relationship. You'll notice that the points are all really close to that straight line, which means that if we knew a child's age, we could fairly accurately predict how much time they spent playing outdoors each day. And similarly for this curved relationship, the points are all fitting very close to that curved line. So again, we'd be able to make really good predictions about time spent playing outdoors doors based on the child's age. So again, that's another very strong relationship. So here are a couple of scatter plots where the relationship is not quite as strong. So still fairly strong. You can see a very definite relationship going on, but there's a lot more scatter around the line. So these relationships would be somewhat weaker. And finally, here's one that's um, weaker again, a negative relationship. And the last scatter plot here, there's practically no relationship between age and time spent playing outside at all. It's just a general scatter of points across the scatter plot with no particular pattern showing at all. The final thing that we need to look at here is outliers. And in this particular scatter plot, we can see one outlier, a case that shows that as being a lot different to all of the other cases. Now this one is an outlier on a on time spent playing outdoors. Their age is not particularly unusual. They were five years old and there are quite a few children in the sample who are aged five, so that's not unusual. But they were spending a lot more time playing outside than all of the other children. So they're an outlier on our dependent variable. In this second example, there's also an outlier, but this one is what we call a bivariate outlier. Their age is not particularly unusual. There were lots of 12 year olds in the sample. The time that they spent playing outside was not particularly unusual. There are quite a few children who spent around about 50 minutes per day outside. But what's unusual is the combination of those two things. It's unusual to find a 12 year old who spent only 50 minutes per day playing outside. So that's a brief introduction to scatter plots. In part two of the lecture we'll be having a look at Pearson's correlation coefficient, which is an objective measure of the strength of the relationship. This has been a Swinburne production.